Alright. Uh, I'm First Sergeant uh, Kep with the 2nd United States Sharpshooters Company D here doing a video uh, with Private Cook and we are going to show you how to load a revolver for reenacting. Uh, some of the things you're going to need, of course you're going to need uh, black powder, triple F, uh, having a nice handy flask makes this go quicker. And then also we use cream of wheat uh, to pack our powder into the cylinders. We keep that in a flask too. And uh, of course, then when you're done, you're gonna need some uh, percussion caps to go on the cones of your cylinder. So the first thing before we get started, uh, make sure you read and follow all of your local reenacting organization safety guidelines when it comes to uh, loading all your weapons safely and properly. Uh, this, this method here is uh, safe and approved for in the Washington State Civil War Association. So, uh, Private Cook, what's the first step in loading the revolver? Well, you have to put this revolver on half cock to make sure the cylinder is able to spin. You take your 20 grains? Yeah. 20 grains of black powder, or coat, or whatever you call it. <clears throat> yeah, so in the in the WCWA here in Washington, the maximum that you can put in a revolver is 40 grains. The, the goal here is that it goes flash and boom. So anywhere about 20 grains, 25 grains, saves powder and meets the, the same requirements. So we don't have a powder measure for this one. We've already pre-measured the, the spout on our flask. And then uh, with the cylinder free, you just uh, operate the lever on your powder flask, fill the, the measure on the flask, and you go around the cylinders. Never overfill. <laughs> yeah. The other thing, <clears throat> while well, um, the private here is loading the pistol, uh, we use cream of wheat. And in some organizations around the country, um, and unfortunately sometimes we see it here too, soldiers will actually pack their cylinders with grease to keep the black powder in. Because obviously without a lead ball, your powder's gonna fall out. <laughs> Uh, cream of wheat doesn't combust and it packs very well. What happens with grease is so, so about once a year uh, we see someone start grass on fire because it expends a uh, fireball. Sometimes you'll see the grease ball fire through the sky and it's also prone to chain fire which I saw early in the year uh, where a couple of cylinders popped off because the grease is still partially flammable. So our next step, Private Cook. Our next step is to pour cream of wheat down the barrel because when you fill the barrel all you need to do is spin the cylinder and you slowly fill it <clears throat> yeah this is a sort of a top tip if you want to go uh, faster uh, whatever uh, cream of wheat you don't use you can just pour on the ground uh, and also you can see as he spins it the cream of wheat falls from the barrel and loads the cylinders and then when you're out of cream of wheat you just fill the barrel again. Now, based on personal preference, you could individually load each cylinder with cream of wheat. Uh, it's up to you. This works fast, especially when we're trying to get on the battlefield and uh, be ready to shoot some ribs. <clears throat> and the next step? Now you take the pressing lever. Yeah, the ramming lever. The ramming lever, and then you just pack it, pack it extremely tight. So. So yeah, the, the cream of wheat compresses very nicely and uh, he still has some cream of wheat still left in the barrel. So actually as he compresses it, you get a little bit uh, of room in the cylinder and that cream of wheat is just filling it back up. And once you uh, pack all your cylinders, you add more cream of wheat and you pack it a second time. And a proper packing will make sure that uh, all your powder stays in place. And you'd be surprised at how effective cream of wheat is. Um, it'll it'll last an entire event if you don't get around to shooting your pistol, whether you're uh, in cab riding a horse or you're a Berdan running across the field as an NCO or an officer. So if you uh, want to tilt that, you can get get in here. You can see how the compression uh, has left a gap, so we have more room for cream of wheat. So we're going to top it off with a little bit more and get you all ready to go. <clears throat> now this method works for uh, 
pretty much every type of revolver. Uh, of course, read and follow all your uh, weapon safety instructions. And uh, you can have a very fun time uh, reenacting with a revolver. Uh, Berdans, we don't typically carry these. Uh, there are a lot of extra weight. But we do on occasion, and especially for shooting demonstrations for the public, we uh, like to pop off some rounds. Yeah. And if you have any questions or comments, please uh, make sure to leave them uh, below in the comments section. And if you'd like further information about our unit, uh, please visit secondusss.com. So <clears throat> now the cylinders are all nicely packed. There's no more cream of wheat left in the barrel. Uh, so what's our next step, Private Cook? It's the cap. Take your percussion caps, six. Set up. So uh, number 10 or number 11 percussion caps uh, are what you use for this. Number 10s are slightly tighter. Uh, we happen to have some number 11s uh, on hand. So you kind of have to squeeze them before you put them on. Yeah, so make sure uh, you take the time and you pinch your cap a little bit. Sometimes you do it on your rifles too. The last thing you want to do is take all the time loading this uh, for battle. And, uh, and then when you draw your revolver, all your caps have fallen off and you have uh, essentially just a few pounds of dead weight on your hip. Um, capping your cylinders can be a little fiddly at first, um, as we just saw. It, it gets a little faster, it gets a little easier with practice. Um, if you wanted to, you could also remove the cylinder. Uh, to help speed it up, but Private Cook is uh, pretty seasoned with the with the revolver here. <laughs> this here is a uh, reproduction of a Remington, which is very common in reenacting, and it was also common during the Civil War. Um, if you want a really big bang, the Colts, the Colt revolvers are really known for making a, a huge sound on the battlefield, and they're loaded pretty much the same way. Okay, so now that it's all capped, what's the what's the safe way to store that? Is it put on the safety in that? Yeah, so what you do is you carefully hold the hammer and you have these spots between the caps and that's where you want to rest the hammer. Uh, you don't want to rest it at half cock and you don't want to rest it on a cap because of course it could fire prematurely uh, in your revolver. And with that you have a uh, properly loaded pistol for Civil War reenacting and uh, we uh, hope to read your comments down below and uh, let us know if there's other questions or videos you would like to see from us. Uh, from Company D, Second United States Sharpshooters, I'm First Sergeant Cap and Private